Hey squad, welcome back. Now today's tutorial builds on a couple of videos I released not too long ago. The first one was all about reducing and removing unwanted background noise from your audio signal. And the second one was how you can use Logic stock effects plugins to enhance your vocal recordings. Now today we'll be extending on this and I'll be showing you exactly how you could go about producing great voiceovers for your podcasts and other projects. We'll be using stock Logic plugins, as well as one or two other free to use VSD plugins. Now, although I'll be demonstrating this in Logic Pro X, the principles apply to any door you are using. Just substitute the stock plugins that you have in your door for the ones that I'll be demonstrating in Logic. Now, if you're finding value in these videos and they're helping you on your musical journey, why not support me too? You can do so by visiting musictechtraining.com forward slash donate. You can also support me by liking the video, subscribing to the channel and leaving me a comment. It's always great hearing from you. Anyway, let's get into it. Now, I've said this multiple times in the past. The quality of the audio you capture will completely determine the quality of the final voiceover you produce. Now that's determined by two key things. Firstly, the equipment that you're using. And secondly, the environment in which you are operating. Now, by no means am I suggesting breaking the bank and spending loads of cash on high-end equipment. Nor am I talking about creating a soundproofed room in your home. Of course, if you have those things, then great. What I'm talking about is being conscious of the impact of your equipment choices, as well as your choice of recording environment. I also highly recommend you check out these videos wherein I go into far more detail on the tools I'd recommend you use for your vocal recordings. So for this demonstration, I'll be using this audio recording, which I captured as a voiceover for one of my recent videos. So let's play back a section. So I'm gonna start at the top work my way through and I'll explain to you exactly what I've used and why. Okay, now it, first thing I want you to notice is over here, you can see that my meter is showing a peak of minus 17.9 dB. And you really ought to check out my video on gain staging. And that will explain to you the importance of setting the right recording levels on your audio interface or within the operating system if you're using a USB microphone. My aim is to have an optimum audio recording level of between minus 18 dB and minus 12 dB. I do not want to exceed that. And as you can see along here, just looking at the waveform displayed here, when we get to this bit right here, it will definitely go above minus 18 dB, but the overall average level is well within the limits I'm aiming for. Okay, so having captured my recording, the very next thing I'm going to do is normalize my audio. There are a number of ways of doing this in Logic. I just do it the old fashioned way. Going into the audio editor, I select all and then use the key command, control N to normalize. Okay. Now that the file has been normalized, the next thing I do is scan through and look for spikes such as these. So let's take this one, for example. We're just gonna come up nice and close, zoom in here, and I'm going to go in and surgically edit this spike. I'm just gonna split the region right here. I'll double click, and here's the section right here. So if I hold down the Option key and press spacebar, brightness, brightness, Okay, so that's pretty loud. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go select the section and I'm gonna reduce the gain of this section that's peaking too much. To do so in Logic, it's Control G, that's the key command, search maximum. And I'm gonna take out about four dB. I'm gonna reduce by four dB. Let's listen to that in context. Uh, now that's adding a lot more brightness there you go. So that edit is seamless. So let's come out of here and then go back to our main file and scan through and find the other peaks and just reduce them so that they sit within the overall average and don't poke out as much. Because later on, 
when we come to using our compressor and limiter, these will have an impact on how effective those processes work. So let's fix these up and then move on. Now here's an example of something you will be experiencing when you record. Have a listen to this. Pitch correction. So that is what we call a plosive and it's where you blow a lot of air onto the mic when you use words beginning with consonants such as B's, P's, F's and others. A pop shield or pop filter will definitely help reduce that but sometimes they creep in. So what you do to, to resolve this, so I'm just going to split the audio right here again. I'm going to double click on this to pull up the audio editor and now I'm going to do something slightly different. I'm going to highlight the section that I want to work on and I'm going to fade in. So I'm going to use the key command in Logic, Control I and let's add a fade in there. Let's find out what that does. Okay, so let's play this back now. Pitch correction. The P is still pretty strong. This is a section I really want to take down. So let's go back into Control G and let's reduce this to by about 6 dB. Let's take 6 dB out. Okay, and let's have a listen now. Pitch correction. Pitch correct. I'll keep working on that until later on I'm going to be using a low cut filter as well which is going to take out some of that low end and it will be nice and smooth. So that's how you get rid of some of the plosives in your recordings. Okay so I've gone through and I've tidied up the main offenders that were peaking and pushing the signal a bit too high. Next thing I'll do is I'll highlight my audio region, hold down the command key, press J to join it all back together. Okay, once again I'm going to normalize. So let's go in here and we're going to normalize again because we've removed the peaks. So now Logic will look for a new peak and increase the overall gain of the audio using that as the reference. And as you can see right here the overall gain has been raised. So just for reference purposes here's the original audio file before normalization and here's the normalized file. So let's just have a quick listen and compare the work done so far. So I'm going to start at the top, work my way through and I'll explain to you exactly what I've used and why. So I'm going to start at the top, work my way through and I'll explain to you exactly what I've used and why. So much louder, much more in your face. As we could hear as well on the normalized file there was a bit of blowing on there. I'll still need to go in and edit that plosive but that's easily done as I've already shown you. Now one of the drawbacks to normalizing your audio is that not only are you bringing up the vocal level, you're also bringing up the level of background noise and that's why it's so important to try and record in an environment where there is very limited background noise captured in the audio. That way you'll avoid messing up your recordings when you normalize. So let's just have a quick listen to some of the background noise that exists in this normalized recording. So I'm going to start at the top. Now that background noise is more of an ambient sound than actual noise but I'm still going to show you how we can reduce or eliminate that. Now the next thing I'll do before I actually start adding my EQ and Dynamics processing is I want to eliminate or reduce the amount of background noise. Now unfortunately Logic still doesn't have a very good noise reduction plugin. Funny enough Audacity which is a free door has a fantastic one and so does Reaper but strangely enough it's been missing from Logic forever and I really do hope they will get something sorted. Anyway, there are a couple of tools I use specifically for this purpose. I'd use either Waves X Noise or Isotope RX7. Now, both of these are often on sale on their respective sites and you can pick them up for around $29 and that's about half their usual price. But believe me, they are absolutely invaluable tools when it comes to noise reduction and most certainly the RX7 elements package which again I bought for around $29 is one of the most important tools in my audio production toolbox. So we're going to use this one for today. I'm going to play back a section of silence, switch off adaptive mode, choose learn and let's play back. 
Right, so the plugin has now learnt what background noise sounds like in this recording. Now by adjusting the threshold and the reduction, we can reduce or eliminate much of that ambient sound to a level that is really negligible. The plugin will now be working within my sections of dialogue and will be reducing that same noise signature throughout. And that's the first thing I'm going to do is use my noise reduction plugin. Now the very next thing we're going to add is a compressor. So we're going to come down here, dynamics, compressor, and I'm going to kick things off with a preset. Let's go for voice and VCA vocal. I like this one because this is modeled on the SSL bus compressor. Do check out my video on Logic Vintage Compressor Circuits. Anyway, let's just play this back and, and see what we get. I'm going to start at the top, work my way through, and I'll explain to you exactly what I've used and why. I'm going to start at the top, work my way through, and I'll explain to you exactly what I've used and why. Now this compressor right now is just catching those peaks and leveling things off a little bit. We're going to start off with that. Okay, so next up is my EQ and I'm going to go for one of my favorites. Um, and that is the Vintage Tube EQ. Let's pull that in. Now, in my previous video on recording vocals or mixing vocals using stock Logic plugins, I went into a bit more detail about this, but essentially, this is modeled on two of the classic Poltec EQs. Let's get into this. Um, I'm going to start with the preset again, tube vocal. Uh, let's work at 100 hertz. And what I'm going to do, let's play back. I'm going to start at the top, work my way through, and I'll explain to you exactly what I've used and why. I'm going to start at the top, work my way through, and I'll explain to you exactly what I've used and why. I'm going to start at the top, work my way through, and I'll explain to you exactly what I've used and why. Excellent. Right, so I've boosted some of the low end and I've attenuated as well. And that's one of the magic secrets about this EQ is you are able to boost and attenuate and still get a lovely color, a lovely curve on the EQ. So let's switch in the, the mid EQ. This top unit deals with low end and high end. And this down here, deals with mid-range. So let's switch that in and let's try that again. I'm going to start at the top, work my way through, and I'll explain to you exactly what I've used and why. I'm going to start at the top, work my way through, and I'll explain to you exactly what I've used and why. Right, there we go. So when bypassed, you could definitely tell there's a significant difference in the quality of the audio. Let's move on to the next plugin. Now, I generally sandwich my EQ between two compressors. Um, you don't have to do it this way, but this works for me. So the next thing I do is come in and I'm going to put on yet another compressor. Let's go there. Um, this time I'm going to go for voice again, and I'm going to go for classic vocal. Now, this compressor is modeled on the legendary LA-2A compressor. And what we've got here, we've got some hard distortion switched in. Let's run the audio and hear the results. I'm going to start at the top, work my way through, and I'll explain to you exactly what I've used and why. I'm going to start at the top, work my way through, and I'll explain to you exactly what I've used and why. I'm going to start at the top, work my way through, and I'll explain to you exactly what I've used and why. I'm going to start at the top, work my way through, and I'll explain to you exactly what I've used and why. I'm going to start at the top, work my way through. Excellent. Yeah. So what this is doing now, because we've added some boost from the use of the EQ, some low end boost, this compressor is now going to once again, level things off. So what you do is you kick things off with these settings and then just adjust your threshold until you start to see some decent gain reduction. I like to keep things simple and we're going to run with this. So the next plugin I'm going to be using right here is this neat little plugin by Wave Arts called the Tube Saturator Vintage. And it's a lovely little plugin that adds some nice color to your recordings, whether it be vocals or anything else that you want to add a bit of tube saturation to, this will do a very nice job. Now it's a free plugin and there'll be a link in the description where you'll be able to 
go straight ahead and grab that. Let's go to the factory preset, and I'm just going to go for a subtle tube warmth. And this preset comes with these settings. Very little actually happening here. When the audio passes through this unit, it automatically adds some level of saturation. There's a bit of drive there. I'm going to switch on the fat, and then we'll do an AB using a bypass switch, and let's see what we get. I'm going to start at the top, work my way through, and I'll explain to you exactly what I've used and why. I'm going to start at the top, work my way through, and I'll explain to you exactly what I've used and why. Yes, it's definitely adding that extra little something. The sum of all those little enhancements make for a lovely result. Let's move to the next one. Okay, so the next thing we want to address is those sibilant sounds, those harsh S's and T's. So let me play back this section right here. Okay, so let's start with the lead vocal. Um, I've gone through and I've switched all of the plugins off. That would be affecting the lead. And I'm just going to play back the raw vocal so you can hear our starting point. Okay, so let's introduce a Diesa. Dynamics, Diesa 2. Once again, we're going to use a preset. I'm going to go for male vocal wide band. And let's just A, B this. Okay, so let's start with the lead vocal. And now bypassed. Let's listen for those S's. Okay, so let's start with the lead. Okay, and now on. Okay, so let's start with the lead vocal. Much better, much more subtle. Those, those S's have been tamed. Small changes, small adjustments, creating great results. Moving on, just a couple more things to add and then we're done. Next thing I like to add is an exciter. And under specialized, you've got your exciter. You pull that up. Again, I've covered this in previous videos, but it's a really subtle effect again. And if used well, it really does enhance your vocals. A good preset for this is Sizzle. You can mess with the controls here, but I'm not going to do too much with that. Let's just A, B this. So I'm going to start at the top, work my way through, and I'll explain to you exactly what I've used and why. So I'm going to start at the top, work my way through, and I'll explain to you exactly what I've used and why. Okay, so let's start with the lead vocal. And it's just adding that high end sheen over the vocal. So those lovely highs will cut through. Not too aggressive, operating at around 12.6 kilohertz. And that's a really nice zone for that sparkle. Again, you can adjust all of this to suit your needs. Right now, this is working just fine for me. And the final plugin we're gonna use is a limiter to round things off. So once again, it's Dynamics limiter. The reason I'm going to use a limiter is to sort of maximize the overall level of my audio and it's going to be nice and transparent. So let's preset it's four vocals. Let's pull that up. So I'm going to start at the top, work my way through and I'll explain to you exactly what I've used and why. Okay, so I'm going to start at the top, work my way through and I'll explain to you exactly what I've used and why. Output level, I sometimes pull it down to around minus 0.3 dB, just a little bit of extra headroom. So let's do an AB of the original vocal and our processed vocal. All I'll be doing next is bouncing this down as a WAV file and inserting this into my video or my podcast or whatever platform I'll be using. So let's do the AB. So I'm going to start at the top, work my way through and I'll explain to you exactly what I've used and why. So I'm going to start at the top, work my way through, and I'll explain to you exactly what I've used and why. Great stuff. I really do hope you found the video useful. If you did, drop me a line in the comment section, like the video and subscribe to the channel. This will really help me out. Now remember to support me at dospeech.com as well as on my social media channels. And finally, switch on that notification bell so just like the rest of the MTTC squad, you'll find out as soon as my next video drops. Until next time, I'm Dr. Deuce. Peace.